Have you been experiencing resistance? Have you been feeling like things are coming to closure, like a chapter of a book is closing and it just feels unfinished? It didn't end the way you wanted. It didn't have the outcome you were looking for and yet it's still closing and you might be feeling some resistance in the new directions you're being pulled. So if so, tune in to this broadcast. Jennifer Spore is here with us. She is the host of the Awakened Heart podcast, and she's an amazing channel, Akashic Records master consultant, advisor. She's just incredible. She has great wisdom for us today about releasing resistance. Join us to find out more. Soul Nectar Show. To discover who you are Anything is possible if you believe To join us on this beautiful journey So let the show So let the show Well, hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Soul Nectar Show, that show where we talk about all things essence, where we gather around the campfire and we share our connection with each other, our stories, our mystical adventures, and we learn about life through the reflection of each other. And uh, this wonderful planet that we're on at the time of the Great Awakening, who knew that it was going to be this intense? Probably not us, because we said yes, and here we are, and we get to experience just how intense this is. And so on Soul Nectar Show, we love to have these conversations and more, and I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird. I love to have these conversations week after week and bring my friends on to have um deep conversations that illuminate me as well as all of you. And so today is going to be no different. We're going to be talking about releasing resistance. I know. I know you've got some. I do. We all do. We want to release it. We wish we could just say, I release my resistance and it would just go. (laughs) It would be so easy if it worked that way. And yet it doesn't seem to exactly work that way. There seems to be more to it. And so what is the whole conversation about resistance and how we can release it? Let's get some insights today. So today we have Jennifer Spore on with us. Welcome, Jennifer. Oh, thanks for the warm welcome, Carrie. I'm so excited to be here with you and your audience to have this chat today. Well, I'm excited to have you here. Jennifer and I had just the most amazing conversation the first time around when we talked and it was it was incredible. We should have pressed record. It was amazing. And so this time we are pressing record and we're here. You're going to catch all of it. So Jennifer is the CEO and founder of her namesake company and the host of Path of the Awakened Heart podcast. She is a spiritual advisor, a channel, Akashic Records trauma-informed master consultant, and a teacher for high-achieving conscious women leaders who are here to live unapologetically expressed in their truth and fulfill their highest destiny in this life, totally led by their souls. And so I'm really, really excited to have you on the show today. And as we were checking in before the show, the conversation that wanted to happen was around resistance and how we can release resistance. And, you know, we are having this conversation on the heels of that massive eclipse in early April. And today actually is the new moon. We're recording this on the new moon. So it's been one month since that massive solar eclipse. I was actually standing outside underneath it with the full on eclipse and the darkness of night coming in the middle of day and the streetlights going on. And it was the eeriest, strangest feeling. And I felt the power of that moment. And that kicked off for me, my journey down to Wurikuta, down to my five-year initiatory path conclusion uh, for the first five years anyway, with uh, we shot a couple people down in Mexico, going out in Wurikuta, going in the desert, going up to the top of the mountain, Kemado. I can't really tell you details about what we do because that's all private, but, but like massive initiation for my husband and I. And like all ensconced in this last month since that solar eclipse, And it feels like a lot. And 
I keep getting this message. You're still integrating it. You're still integrating it. And I want to get up and run. Like I want to get up and do, go and do it. And there's lightning moving through my body and I got to stay still. And so I don't know if anybody else is feeling like this dramatic, strange, like I feel so filled with energy, but I'm exhausted. I can't move. I need to move. I want to do something. I don't know what to do. I'm, you know, it's how do we incorporate all this? <laughs> and there could be some resistance to incorporating some of it. Right. I mean, because we are here at this time when, at least for myself, I'm ready to embody. I'm ready to fully surrender and embody my spirit and let it all in, right? And like live completely from my soul and every atom, every cell and every space in between. And I made an invocation on the top of the mountain to the effect of that. And I, I even put little tricky words in there, like said, like anytime <laughs> I try to like avoid this, just you have my permission to correct it. You know, <laughs> like you have my explicit permission to fix all that resistance. So, and still I feel like, wow. So tell us about like, what's your perception about resistance? Like, why does it arise? Yeah. We know what we want, but how come it's, we get this resistance? You know, there's something that you just said that I would love to, to elaborate on before I do that. I want to say that, uh, yeah, when the eclipse happened, we all changed timelines. We literally changed timelines. And I was actually flying home from Mexico the day of the eclipse during the eclipse. And wow. I was on the plane and I wasn't in the full path of, you know, the visibility of it. It was more like 35%, but I looked out the window and could definitely see, you know, that it was darker outside. Um, and yes, this whole last month has been a ride I know for me there were lots of sudden like plot twists like unexpected sudden energetic shifts and and twists and charms and I mean and and major stuff not small stuff so uh no one is alone we are all in this thing together um I want I'd love to kick off our conversation about resistance uh, with something, you know, something that you said about, you know, you were setting these intentions, right? And you even kind of like, you know, crossed the T's and dotted the I's by saying, and if I da 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 da, then correct me. And I want to share with everyone that at the time, in that moment of time, that does work, right? Setting that intention. What happens is that we still have free will in any given moment beyond that moment right so what happens is is that if we don't align so if something that we experience doesn't continue to align with that intention that we've set then we end up canceling that out uh, this is something that I teach with clients a lot in in creating their reality and manifestation right it's the importance of embodying those intentions uh, because, you know, this conversation about resistance isn't super sexy and glamorous, <laughs> I know, but it is the conversation that, you know, it needs to be had and it needs to be heard, right? Because you, you know, manifesting in of itself, that word has even become like a buzz term, a, a buzzword, you know, in the personal development industry and spiritual communities and ask, believe and receive. Yes, that sounds extremely inspiring, right? And it can be, but yes, there is more to it than that. Becoming the master, right? Seeking to master the creation of your reality and your experience here involves harmonization and balance of all of your bodies. So spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, and energetically. And what we fall into all too easily, right? As our human selves and our human experience is like sometimes setting intentions and, and intending to manifest, but we end up trying to do a lot of that isolated in our mental space. So really, as we're setting those intentions, right, you know, bringing all aspects of our being into harmonization when we're doing it is, is really important. And it is true that with clear intention and clear energy, things 
can change. You can change timelines. You can change your reality in an instant. It's really about that harmonization and and that balance. And so where does resistance come into play, right? Because resistance can show up in, in sneaky ways. <laughs> because the other thing that we tend to do a lot in our human experience, right, is um, we are very conditioned to compartmentalize everything, to put a label on everything, right? And to focus on things as if they are separate entities, which all that does is feed that separation consciousness, right? So it's understanding that whatever we're, whatever we are intending, intending it with our whole being. So, you know, like how you show up in business is how you show up in, in life and vice versa. And same with, you know, relationships, you know, money, career, those are some of the major ones, right? Like, like health, everything is interconnected. So it's really, you're on this journey, right? To lift the veil, to see more clearly how all of those threads, you know, come together and to, and to harmonize them. And, and when you learn how to do that more and more, your entire life, not just what you intend to create, you know, or to manifest, starts to feel more like it's in flow and like it's easier for you to choose peace and to feel a lot more neutral about outcomes and circumstances. Yeah. And it takes mastery though. You like, you have to actually practice mastery to have mastery. Yes. So like, I mean, releasing attachments, like you were just saying, like putting yourself in the flow by not being attached to the outcome. Um, that takes practicing losing your, like releasing your attachments, becoming aware of what they are and then releasing them. So that awareness muscle, I'm aware that I'm attached to the outcome looking exactly like this. Oh, it yeah. didn't. I'm aware that now I've judged it and put it into a container as bad or wrong, you know? Yeah, and yeah. then I forgot that the reason it's doing that is because of this other choice I made over here that's not congruent with the current in context. And so of course it changes everything in order to be congruent with what I am manifesting with the, whatever has the greatest power and energy is what's manifesting, right? Like, like if we're really like, for example, if you made big prayers on the solar eclipse, well, you know, that's a really powerful day to make those prayers. And if you really embodied it, right, like you're talking about, like felt it in your body, visualized it, experienced it, maybe even danced to it or wrote it down, you know, put it in a fire ceremony, use some sacred ceremony with it, then that is set in motion now. And so any other smaller claims you might've made along the way, they don't have as much energy as that, that has more energy. It's going to recalibrate things, right? Like towards your highest claim you're making. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and we, everything is happening in this now moment, right? Like we have the power in, in any moment to change our intentions or realign them or amplify them, you know, if you will. Um, yeah, we are, I mean, there really aren't even words just to say that, you know, as, as much as we've evolved as a human race, you know, like humanity and with everything that's even, even happening right now with this, this like higher frequency of consciousness that we're stepping into as a collective, we've still barely even scratched the surface of our potential as creators. Yeah. And this is current time on the planet is really about becoming sovereign, right? So that we can then become interdependent. So we're moving out of dependency into sovereignty so that then we can practice interdependence. And like, so we have to, we're co-creating our dreams together, but first it starts with us knowing like in our soul's intelligence, like what dream, what vision is our soul giving us to manifest? And then some of those dreams are not going to be simpatico with other people in our, even our family system or other people in our life that we would like to travel with. But if it's not compatible, it's going to just kind of go. Right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And we struggle with that, right? Because 
we're taught, we've lived in a society where we're taught, right? It's like if someone is family or if someone has this label or we've attached this meaning, right, to this person, then we can't not travel with them or not share the most intimate details of our life with them, you know? And in many cases, there are lots of people that are blessed that have those close relationships with their family members. There are also other people that that don't. And really the point of this, right, is to say that the point of your entire journey here is your personal learning and, and evolution and how to fortify your foundation and a crystal clear sense of self, you know, like you said, you know, interdependent, right? It's just like understanding who you are separate from all of that. And, and but that can create confident. resistance. It can yes. create resistance because like, like that <laughs> happened to me. Like I, I, some shifts happened and I had to make a choice in my family system. And when I made that choice, when I checked in, it's an, it was in my highest good and, and my highest destiny path. I always check things against, is it my highest destiny path? Cause I'm always wanting to stay aligned with my highest destiny path. That's just like my checkpoint. And it was like, is this aligned with my highest destiny path? Yes. Is it aligned with the highest good for this person? No, I really love this person. <laughs> Dang. Okay. So I had to make this choice of like, you know, am I going to do what's in my highest destiny, knowing that my highest destiny is not only for me, but for all the people I serve, I've got to make that call and I've got to choose, you know, to serve the greatest number of people to have the greatest influence, the greatest impact I could possibly have, which goes against everything I've been taught, <laughs> you know, about my role. And so that was really challenging. That happened all within this eclipse period. So it feels like a shoring up for me anyway. It's been a real shoring up of all of those places where I resisted doing what my soul said. You know, I said, no, no, let me see if I can make this work. No, no, let me give it more time. No, no let me talk to this person a little bit more. Let me see if this will work. You know, it's kind of like almost like trying to manipulate the outcome I wanted right? And not just accepting the way things are, you know, and that has been really challenging too. this whole process. I love that you bring that up too, because there as a sensitive being, especially there is a fine line sometimes between, oh, am I being of service, right? To allow this person more space or, you know, to take a little bit more time, you know, uh, or is it really coming from a space of fear, right? So I think you were saying this earlier in our conversation, right? Um, you didn't actually say stepping in, into an observer role, but you said something like that, the importance of like in releasing resistance, you, you, you have to start identifying some of these pieces and then actually stepping into an observer role to walk yourself through from a space of curiosity, right? To really get clear on understanding on where everything comes from and then making a decision from that space. And it's a lot easier to do that even with our closest, most intimate relationships when we are very fortified in what truth feels like in our body and we're very clear and fortified in in our sense of self because then we know yep that doesn't align with my values that doesn't align you know with with who I am yeah and I I was definitely experiencing that so I I questioned the the decision I questioned it I questioned it I questioned it I questioned it and then I got up on the mountain with all the medicine and I was like okay fine the same answer you know I mean I didn't get any different answers I got all the same answer so it just for me it just took me a little bit longer to accept that decision on my, yeah. from my soul and to trust that there's wisdom in that. Like there, there was great wisdom in it and that it will actually prove to be more beneficial in the long run, having made that choice. And this is, this is part of what I learned when writing healing the mother wound is that 
you know, when we, when we listen to the hollow bone and we make the choice, like you said, with non-attachment and we go ahead and do the thing that we're afraid to do because it's going to disrupt all of the conditioning that we live in. And we go ahead and do it anyway. What happens is usually more liberation, more freedom and more empowerment for everyone, but it just looks messy for a while. Right. And Mm -hmm. we can't avoid the mess though. And that's the resistance is trying to avoid the mess or trying to do it in such a way that there won't be any mess, but good luck. That's another program. (laughs) That's it another is. program, right? Right. Because you know, we want to avoid the mess, right? That's what I'm talking about in releasing resistance, going deeper, right? That's another way that resistance shows up for us. Yeah, because it's trying to like keep the peace without having the conflict. Keep the peace without holding the boundary. Yes. Keep, keep the peace without, you know, and these are all self-protection mechanisms to keep the relationship and keep the belonging. And it's afraid of like having that honest conversation or standing in the truth or standing in the boundary or standing in your personal truth and letting the other person figure it out. That's so hard because it does disrupt relationships for a while. And truth, truth coming from a place of love, right? Is, is the highest form of love. And sometimes that looks messy. And sometimes it's, you know, relationships don't always work out the way that we want them to, the way that we desire them to. And it's in our willingness to accept and let go, knowing that we've shown up in the highest way, you know, that's, that's true love, love without condition. Yeah. I love that you said that. And I'm wondering, like, as just an adjunct to this, that letting go, like you just talked about, letting go of the way we wanted it to be, for example, that has shown up big time in my, especially in my healer group, this, um, since the eclipse has been this period of time where like literally everybody in my group with their own details, you know, and myself included have felt like this closure, this epic closure of history up until now, kind of like this is coming to an end and this feeling of incompleteness inside and like some disappointment that it didn't work out the way we wanted, right? Like it didn't resolve itself. It didn't, it didn't resolve itself to the place we wanted it to be. And yet it's coming to a close and yet that's complete. And that part has been that radical acceptance to feel that disappointment, to feel that a really strange limbo feeling like it's done, but it doesn't feel like it should be done, but it is complete. And it's, it's like unfinished. Didn't, we didn't get everywhere we needed to go. We didn't check all the boxes yeah. and it's still ending. Did you have some a similar experience with this eclipse? Oh, hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yes. Um, I, you know, I want to say first, just in response to what you were just saying, it is really important to give ourselves permission to grieve that, Mm. to grieve what's ending, even if it doesn't serve our highest good anymore. This is part of the human experience, right? And that's another program, especially people who consider themselves overachievers, high achievers, which I know I am. I've always been the part, like a very motivated, driven learner, you know, my whole life, basically. And it's just sometimes I can still fall into that place of like checking the box off the list. Oh, okay. I got to the root of that, you know, now moving on to the next stage of, of my evolution. And I've been, you know, I've experienced that many times where I, time and time again, it's like a boomerang or like a rubber band or something. Like I keep bringing myself back to Jennifer. It's okay to chill for a day, like create the space just to sit there without listening to music, without doing anything, right? Even meditating without just doing anything, like just allowing yourself to be and to, to fully feel all of those feelings. Cause what happens too, is that when we don't give ourselves permission to feel the full spectrum of all the emotions, whether they make sense to us or not, they 
are still inside of us in our body, in our physical body, even though we think that we've moved on and they become stored energy, right? So I'm, I'm sure everyone's experienced this where, you know, you've done some inner work on something, healed some trauma or healed something that you've experienced. And then it seems to keep coming back and you're like, what the hell? Like I, you know, when does it end or whatever? You know, first our journey of learning really never ends. That being said, right? When that happens, it's because, it's just because there's some energy being stored in your body that wasn't fully processed and and released and it's you know just so important for for us to to give ourselves the space such an important part of our journey and now I don't even remember what you really asked me so <laughs> oh well you know that was beautiful and I would say thank you for giving me permission because I did I have been grieving I I've had a lot of grief surface in my heart and I've just it's just been catching me by surprise coming up yeah. you know, just several days, the last few weeks. And I'm just been with it. Just let it, you know, I was in Costco and it came up and I, cause I saw someone that reminded me of my situation and I just burst into tears and I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm just going to let myself cry. You know, this is what catalyzed it for me. I'm grateful. I'm just going to let myself grieve yeah. and put an ending to that part of my life, you know? Yeah. There is, you know, I feel like this is important to bring into everyone's awareness as well, just to say that we're literally wired to create. We're wired as alchemists. You know, we are this soul, this nebula, this beautiful like star energy, you know, like having this experience here on earth in this human body, um, this glorious experience you know the earth is so abundant and there's just so much around us right that being said so many of us up to this point have had ancestral programming or societal programming that literally has taught us the opposite of who we really are so it is so important to allow yourself to bring forward anything that wants to come forward, whether it's an emotion that you want to feel, a change that you want to make in your business or career or whatever it is, let that come forward because that's what you're here to do. Like a lot of people talk about purpose and I've done this in the past as well, talked about purpose in the context of this thing that you find. And then it's like, hallelujah, you know, like my life has meaning now, but actually your purpose is being here. Your purpose is being your most authentic self and yes doing work in the world that lights you up is an important component of that but it's not the component of that it's bringing forward the deepest most authentic version of who you are through every aspect of your being yeah because I mean definitely being a mother has been a big purpose of mine and it's just, it's changing now, you know, because my kids are older, they're in their twenties. And so like, that's all shifting too. And a big part of my lesson over the last month has been to let go, you know, to let go of the old form and the old ideas and even the way the relationships express themselves with me, with the different kids and just be like, okay, I'm open now, like a blank slate for what's needed, right? Like what's needed now, what's the relationship now. And it might just be like none right now, you know, I mean, that might be yep. it. And can right. I be okay with that? Like yep. what part of me isn't okay with that? Well, and then I get, program, you know, right? it's another program. And then they get to find out like what part of me got some self-worth out of that program, you know, by playing yeah. that role, you know, and can I pull that back inside now, you know, so that I'm no longer externalizing yeah. my worth, but I'm coming inside to myself and loving who this being is and celebrating this being. Cause there was like, I found this sneaky little loophole where I was like, gauging or postponing my assessment of my worth based on how one of my children was doing. And since that person doesn't really want to live conventionally, like it was not matching my picture 
like ever. It hasn't, but I was like, oh my gosh, like this, how can, how can I be okay with the job I did when he's being like this? And it was like, oh, wow. Okay. Well, first of all, challenge all your ideas about what's good and what's bad. Right. So I've gone through that whole process of like, it's perfect for him. Like whatever he's doing right now is absolutely perfect because it's part of his divine plan. It can't be any other way because he's divine being of light. So like, that's exactly what he needs. And then I was like, oh, wait a second. I am totally tying up my worth and his like exterior performance or whatever I think it is. That's messed up. <laughs> so I was like, wait a second, how can I pull it all back in and see like, how, like, how can I just assess myself? Like, how, how do I feel I have done as a mother? Like, where were some areas I wish I would have done something differently? Like, this has been part of my conclusion process, right, <laughs> for this part of my life. And just assessing, like, how do I feel like I did? And can I have an honest assessment with myself? Like, not glad-handing myself, also not throwing myself under the bus, but just like a realistic, balanced perspective. And so I've gotten to this, like, pretty... I feel accurate assessment of myself and then just work to come to peace on that, to accept it radically as that is just what has been and what is, and that is now complete. So next chapter, can I let it be? I can't fix it. There's no going back. So it's like, all right, well, that's just what it was. That's another form of resistance, right? Right. So it's just us noticing all those forms of resistance and how they can show up because when we choose to allow ourselves to start to let go of control to to acknowledge that a lot of this has been illusory programming that has pulled us away from the true essence of who we really are just even coming to that conclusion to begin to accept that is absolutely life-changing and then creating the reality that you really want in your heart of hearts to create starts to feel, things just start to feel easier. That doesn't mean that there isn't chaos. That doesn't mean that there aren't challenging things, right, that happen, you know, but what happens is that you're able to choose peace and you're able to choose peace and to choose truth because you're grounded in the, in the sense of, you know, who you are. And I always, I always visualize, you know, it's like this, the, the oldest, you know, strongest oak tree in the midst of a hurricane. It's like your, (laughs) your branches might be flexible, you know, but you don't move from your foundation, you know, you're clear on, on what that is. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to know thyself, right? Like that's the major thing is to know thyself and to come into that center place. Like so much time, so many moments of pulling the Oracle cards this last month, especially I've been guided, like go inside, like center, come in, consult the ancient ones. Like you're doing great. You know? Yeah, this is hard. And you got this and trust, like trust that I planted millions of seeds, which I did. And that those, some of those are going to flourish, but they're going to flourish in their own time. And it's not up to me anymore. So like relinquishing that, that sort of idea of like somehow having control over the madness, because there is no control. Come on. You're like, you're, you're just holding space. That's it. There's no control. You can't prevent something from happening that you don't want. Right. So you just have to be present, you know, for the people you care about, like even as a healer or as a mentor, as a coach, as a, any one of those roles where we hold space for others, we, all we can do is show up, do our best, be our best. And my dad used to say, you, you do the best you can with the tools you have at the time and you call it a day. And it was really clear for him and it's become clear for me. It's like, ah, okay. Cause I would go back and reassess and reassess and reassess and see, okay, I could have done this. I could have done that. I could have done this other thing. And like you said, you know, when the universe is like, we're closing this chapter, there'll be no more of that. You know, (laughs) it's like, you, you just like, don't have any more say anymore. Like you're done. Wrap it up. And and when we are feeling 
that which the closing of a chapter can feel very chaotic and, and heavy for us. And, and when it does feel that way, it's often a result of our persistent resisting the ending, right? Mm -hmm. So if we are more honed in on a day-to-day -day basis in our experience of what wants to come forward to be expressed from within us, who, who we are, then we still experience challenges, but they're more like little speed bumps in the road and not these huge blowups, you know? Yeah, exactly. And we're lighter too, because we're not like hauling history along with us when the universe is trying to cut the cord on that, you know, and we're like, no, I'm keeping it. <laughs> Yes. And, you know, it's, it's really sad to see people do that. And, and I have also had my own versions of doing that. And I know like it, it just didn't turn out the way you want. I have too. I have too. You know? Absolutely. I mean, everything I say is from a space of wisdom, you know, having learned the hard way lots of times, <laughs> which is one of the reasons why I'm so passionate, you know, about supporting other people and about having conversations like this is so it can so it can be a bit of a smoother ride so in terms of like any any advice you might have for someone that says listen I said I release it I put it in the fire I wrote it all up I burned it I got a healing I went you know I did all the things why am I still holding on to it? Like, why yeah, does it still because, circle in my mind? Because you were likely in your mental space when you did all of that. So, okay. so that's back to the I, embodiment. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's why. So really when you are, you know, receiving a healing, in that feeling of that is, so when you're receiving a healing go back because it stopped me oh okay i didn't catch so when you're receiving a healing just okay. start from there is it recording yeah oh that's weird it didn't tell me it was okay uh, so when you're receiving a healing, it's really important that beyond consciously setting the intention, right, that you're also feeling that experience in every cell of your body, anchoring yourself into the feeling that it has truly been released. And you will know this because you will feel lighter. Everything is a frequency. Everything is an energy. So when you've released something truly from your body, from all of your being, you will physically feel lighter. If you still feel the density, you'll know that there's more work to do, which by the way, that's okay too. Sometimes, you know, it isn't a one and done scenario. <laughs> Sometimes you may need multiple sessions with someone or you may need to sit multiple times with yourself right to spend time doing that exploration something that you said earlier carrie that is really key um that i didn't elaborate on at the time is that you were talking about us accepting right accepting what is and I can't remember how you worded it, but you talked about coming to terms with that. I want to say that in whatever way, for those listening, in whatever way you need to come to terms and to accept whatever it is, honor yourself in the way that you're feeling called to do that because we are all designed differently. You know, I, I, I'm not an expert in human design. I do follow human design and study it very closely. And human design actually 
uh, teaches a great example around this, around that each of us is designed uniquely and our way of making decisions, right? Of coming to acceptance around things is unique to each of us as well. So this just goes back again to honoring at more depth your authentic self and who you are and that any way that shows up for you is, is perfect because you're you and there are there is no one else out of the 8 billion people here that is like you. Yeah. And so like, for me, sometimes that's like letting myself be mopey about it because yes. I'm such a can do person. I'll just like, well, okay, that's ended. Okay. I'm yes. over here and do this. And it's like, no, let me just go and go ahead and be mopey. I'm just going to sit around and be sorry for myself for a day, you know, and just let myself yeah. feel that and let myself cry and let myself really you know, yeah. go talk to myself, right? Like it's okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay to be that way. Like we live in such a productive society that like wants to step over everything meaningful. Well, that, it's actually you know, more productive. Yeah. It's over. It's, it's like productive. too much. No, I mean, it's more productive to allow yourself the space, yeah. to be, right? Because when we don't give ourselves that space, then that energy is stored in our body and it simply manifests itself as something else down the road, such as disease, you know, our, our health challenges are everything. Everything is interconnected. I love that you say like, you've got to feel it shift in your body to know that it's really shifted, which means you got to be present in your body, which means you got to get out of your mind about it. And so that's a balance. Like sometimes we've got to tell the story in order to open up the feelings. And then I've been coached heavily by my mentors to then stop telling the story. Now it's really hard to put the brakes on that story once it's got its momentum going. But when you're, once you're feeling the feeling, like go ahead and just stop talking and just feel because any talking after that moment is just like, taking you out of the feeling and it's putting you back in your head. So it's like, there is a balance yeah. there. Yes. And it's a day to day, like, you know, working out at the gym, it's, you know, building a muscle, right? Uh, it takes discipline. It takes discipline. Now there's a difference between force and discipline, right? Discipline is something that, you know, is aligned for you. Uh, but you're resisting. So when you show up anyways, you're not forcing yourself, right? What you're doing is creating a different reality for yourself through doing that. There is a time for the story. Um, I will say though, that going beyond even the story, even if it's something you've been struggling with for a long time, if you can focus on reaching a space in your body that you are letting go of the resistance to change without getting into the story, just focusing on willingness to be open to change. I've had this happen so many times with clients in Akashic Records <laughs> reading sessions because they're totally an open book and like ready to, to move on. Those shifts can happen in your Akashic Records energetically in less than an hour. So just keeping that in mind on your journey, right? It's like, as there is always a time for the story, also understanding that even beyond that, it's really about your readiness. Yeah, your the readiness. readiness for change, the willingness to embrace it yes. and all that it entails. And yes. that's what the dreams are made of. Dreams, the dreams I'm calling forth are big dreams, right? And I'm sure everybody yes. else here feels the same way. You're calling in big dreams for New Earth. You're calling in big dreams for your family for seven generations forward. And that's going to mean some sacrifices, it's going to mean some big changes because the way that we're living is not sustainable. And so it's going to require change. And can we let ourselves cry if we have to cry about that and then let go because it is a new reality we're entering. Yes. And being compassionate with yourself and others, of course, because we're all on this journey, right? Of being disciplined, of having these 
you know, pure intentions of making a difference and learning and, and we're all going through it. Yeah. And it's something that we could just all hold each other in love, you know, like to let ourselves move through it more gracefully. Yeah. We're being guided. I always remind myself, it's like, I'm just listening to the hollow bones. So I am being guided in this choice and yeah, I get to face my own things, my own resistances, my own unmet desires and, and move through those. So even if it looks like it's negatively impacting one person, it's also impacting me, you know, I've got to move through it too. But on the other side of this, I really do believe like if you every time I followed the hollow bone guidance, it's always been right on. It's always led to a better outcome. You know, every time I drank the cup of Aya, it always led to a beautiful ceremony. I always got insights and revelations. I always were, got healing. So, you know, yeah, overcoming the resistance, taking the medicine anyway, making a choice anyway, and trusting that it's better on the other side. That's a leap of faith we're all in right now, isn't it? It's so funny, this analogy as, as you're talking comes up, you know, it's just like, oh, you might not like Brussels sprouts, but you know, they're healthy for you. Go so. ahead and eat them. Gag them down. Go ahead and eat them. On them. I couldn't stand those when I was a kid, but now I actually love them. Go figure. Yeah, we can learn <laughs> to love what's good for us. That is true. Totally. So. I love your work and, you know, I just think you're fantastic. Jennifer's insights are just amazing. If you're looking for somebody who can just tap right into you and give you just eat gobs and gobs of truth, th this is your gal. <laughs> She's amazing. And I mean, I'm pretty good with other people too, but like, I was like, man, I need to talk to you. There's a few things, you know, because we all need help and you might be, I'm sure everybody listening, you guys have your own talents. You're all amazing. You're so many of you are, are leaders and masters. And, you know, so I, I honor you deep bow everyone, but also Jennifer, you always need somebody on your corner that can, that can point out the blind spots. And I got some blind spots. I know I do. And so does everybody. So beautiful work and check out the, um, her podcast too, the, um, path of the awakened heart podcast. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. Is there anything else you want to just transmit to the audience while we're here and then we'll wrap up? We covered a lot today and my greatest intention, you know, from my heart is that that everyone listening can take from our conversation some actionable, you know, things that they can apply in their own life, right? To gain a better understanding of how resistance shows up for us and to know that <clears throat> you are all beautiful, amazing, and perfect, and and to give yourself permission to create space for that to come forward, to be expressed in your physical reality, to be your most authentic self. I love it. Ah, so juicy. I love it, love it, love it. Um, thank you so much for taking your time to come on the show and share your wisdom. And everybody check her out. Definitely look up her website. All the links are in the show notes below. So check that out. And um, we're going to give you guys kisses now. Are you ready to give kisses, Jennifer? We, I always give air kisses to everybody. <laughs> Energetic Reiki kisses. Here they come. Love you guys so much. Mm. <laughs> and have a great week, everyone. And I'll see you next time on Soul Nectar Show. Bye for now. If you found even one gold nugget in this episode of Soul Nectar Show... Will you do us a favor? Will you subscribe, like, and share this episode? Maybe even write a comment and let us know what you thought about it. We really, really want to engage with you at a much deeper level. Let's be part of community together. Have a great week, everyone. Bye for now. To dive in deeper to nourishing conversation, visit soulnectar.show. So the show Awaken away the sun show Take a sip from the drip of the nectar From the source of who you are Yeah 
Yeah.